Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. Alright, we're going to continue our theme now that's been going on for the last about four videos where we're going to keep going places and seeing things. Um, today we're going to take a drive down to College Station, Texas. That's about 100 miles south of here and among other things that there is the George H.W. Bush Presidential Library and Museum. We're going to check that out. Also, we're going to go uh, check out a couple of uh, kind of fun roadside attractions that are in town. Uh, probably end up turning us into two videos, so let's take a drive to College Station. All right, we are at the first stop of our second day of our road trip into College Station. Uh, we are at a place now called Veterans Park. And uh, according to Roadside America, uh, there's a lot of really cool statues of different branches of the military and kind of action poses. And I kind of had to look around the park a little bit to find it, but I have found it. And let's go take a look at this. This looks like this is going to be pretty cool. You'll have to forgive any wind noise that's going on here today. I'm probably about a hundred miles closer now to uh, Hurricane Nicholas, which has come ashore in Texas uh, just last night. And uh, we might actually get a little rain out of it here now because I'm a little closer to it than I normally am. But you'll have to forgive me if there is any, any wind noise. And this one is dedicated to the American Revolution which was uh, the fight for independence of the United States against British rule. And this was from 18, or 1775 to 1783. So this section here is about what is called the Indian Campaign, which was from 1790 to 1891. This is a pretty elaborate thing back here. Spent a lot of time on this. And this display uh, commemorates the War of 1812. Apparently after the Revolutionary War, the British refused to, uh, to leave some of the forts uh, in the north and uh, ultimately they began blockading merchant ships coming to the United States to trade and also began arming some of the Native Americans uh, to resist American expansion. Uh, in 1812, uh, the United States declared war on Britain, and uh, that's what this commemorates here. Now, as I'm looking at this, I'm beginning to realize that uh, if I really covered this thing thoroughly, this vlog would probably be two hours long, and I wouldn't get anything else done today. So I'm gonna kind of gloss over this. But each one of these exhibits, uh, includes a very detailed placard that uh, describes what was going on in this particular war. This was uh, the War for Texas Independence, uh, 1835 to 1836, and it tells the kind of whole, the whole history of it, uh, starting from, you know, how Texas was a uh, province of Mexico and uh, how uh, the uh, Catholics in Mexico wanted all of the... Uh, the Texans to become Catholics and of course all the, a lot of the people who immigrated here from Europe uh, were staunch Protestants and there was also Mexico wanted an anti-slavery uh, plank in, in there and that was uh, not exactly going for uh, very favorable in Texas at the time but uh, that's uh, like I said it goes into great detail on this I could probably spend two hours over here covering this but this is the uh, statue that represents the uh, fight for Texas independence. All right, this exhibit here commemorates the Mexican War from 1846 to 1848. Uh, apparently after Texas declared independence uh, and became uh, an American uh, territory, Mexico became more antagonistic about it and they were concerned that uh, the United States was basically going to take over most of North America and so they began resisting and uh, you know once the uh, once the Americans had taken over Texas they of course put a military base on here which that just enraged Mexico further and they were and America was attempting to buy and later conquer California and Arizona and the rest and uh, 
that all resulted in the war of uh, the Mexican War, and that's what this one commemorates. And of course, this section commemorates the American Civil War from 1861 to 1865. That was also referred to as the war between the states. The northern states wanted to, among other things, uh, uh, end slavery. The southern states wanted to preserve slavery. And it turned out to be one of America's bloodiest wars. Let's wander around here, see what else is back here. Because I think this whole section is kind of develop, uh, dedicated to the Civil War. Yeah, this whole section seems to be based on the whole Civil War. So this is a, 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 a Confederate soldier. You can tell by the, uh, the Confederates, uh, the CS on the belt buckle there. All right, this statue depicts the Spanish-American War from 1898. Uh, basically what was going on, America prior to that had been kind of tied up in its own civil war and kind of was a little war weary and didn't really want to get involved in what was going on in Cuba, although there were some financial interests that America was interested in. And basically in the years following the American Civil War, um, there started to be like ye yellow journalism stories about atrocities going on in Cuba and eventually America made the decision to enter that war. Apparently it only went for about six months, but that one's commemorated here with this scat statue. And this one's called the Rough Rider. All right, this one's called the Philippine Insurrection, uh, which is from 1899 to 1913. This particular statue is called the Sentry. And basically the story there was, it was kind of a, an offshoot of the Spanish-American War, uh, but in this case centered on uh, the Philippines. Uh, America and, uh, Philip and Philippine rebels ended up taking the, uh, the Philippine capital of Manila. And at that point, uh, the U.S. was gonna kind of, it was, the Philippines was gonna become a territory of the U.S. and they would come in and provide government and stability and the likes, but ultimately the Philippines decided to rebel and that war went on for many years. All right, this one here commemorates World War I or the Great War, 1917 to 1918, which was basically uh, the United States, Britain, and France against Germany and Italy and a few other countries at that time. That was considered the most, uh, the, mo the worst war ever at the time. Little do they know what was coming next. And this display here is for World War II, 1941-1945. A couple of iconic images here. This one uh, here is called A Letter From Home. I gotta admit, when I walked up on this, I thought it looked like the guy had some sort of a cell phone in his hand, but no, it's A Letter From Home. There is actually printing on it, but it's hard to read. And of course, uh, one of the one of the very uh, iconic images, uh, Rosie the Riveter, and you know, because uh, all the men were off uh, fighting the war, the women stayed home, and they were making the bombs and all that stuff. This was a great step forward for uh, for women entering the workplace, because let's face it, when there's no men to do that, somebody's got to do the work. And this one is called Day of Infamy. Obviously that commemorates Pearl Harbor. I gotta admit, it's a very beautiful setting back here for all of this too. Kind of just a nice little wild area with a little park going through the middle of it. And uh, all these little tributes are just kind of uh, scattered around here. Okay, this one's dedicated to the Korean conflict or Korean War. And basically what happened here is uh, the communist North Koreans attempted to take over the South Korean part of the island and unify the whole island. And uh, basically the South Koreans and the United States joined together and fought back. Now this is one of those uh, wars where we never really resolved it and even to this day North and South, South Korea are separate countries, and uh, that's one of the one of the sad things about this world.
Now this one's about the Vietnam War and this depiction is called Hot LZ, which is hot landing zone. Kind of uh, Vietnam soldiers uh, on the end of a helo landing in a, in a hot zone. Really beautiful uh, work on this, isn't it? Now a few of these don't actually have statues uh, made, but they still have like a little marker commemorating it. Uh, Southwest Asian War and a little placard telling about the story there. And the Kosovo campaign, 1999. Uh, this one's dedicated to Desert Storm. And uh, it's got one of the battleships here, uh, kind of on a wall placard here. I kind of see that we have a uh, stealth fighter back here. That's not the one my father worked on. He worked on the bomber, but that's kind of cool. That was a big part of, uh, of the uh, fighting during uh, Desert Storm. And of course, we got a tank here. It's just, kind of, it's just kind of a display on the side of the wall, but it kind of uh, sticks out a little bit here so you can see that. And then we have uh, a statue of a soldier here. All right, let's move on, see what else is here. This statue here commemorates the events of September 11th, uh, 2001, New York City, and uh, actually includes this sculpture here, which includes an actual piece from the World Trade Center Towers. You can see the, uh, the metal, how, how damaged it was from the collapse. And since, uh, since the 20th anniversary of September 11th was just a couple days ago, they've got this thing out here. Never touched a piece of the World Trade Center towers before. Look at how these uh, bolts are just sheared bent down here. Wow. Just standing back a little bit and kind of getting the whole thing from a distance here. This is actually called the War on Terror Memorial. The Brazos Valley Veterans War on Terror Memorial is composed of steel relic from one of the World Trade Center towers in New York that was struck by enemies of the United States of America on September 11, 2001. And this is uh, another part of the exhibit for the uh, War on Terror Memorial. This one's called Never Again. And then right in the middle of this is this big massive plaza that seems to uh, commemorate uh, all of the wars and those who fought and died. A lot of names. See, I'm wondering if this is maybe a list of people who uh, contributed to the creation of this monument. Because I'm, I'm seeing a whole family here. I'm guessing a whole family didn't go and die at war here. These must be people that contributed to uh, the building of this. Okay, it's called Texas A&M Corps of Cadets Honor Field.
And unfortunately, there's space left for more names. Probably need them at some point, huh? So I think I'm gonna wrap this video up. I gotta admit, I expected this and two other things to be one video today, but there's a lot more here than I expected to see. Uh, this is a really amazing place. I highly recommend if you're ever in College Station, you check out this. It's in the Veterans Park uh, in College Station. Definitely recommend it. I could have spent two hours here and still not covered the whole, the whole thing. So check it out if you ever get a chance. And um, I think I'm going to end this vi video for now. So thank you as always for watching. And I will see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.